A chipmunk, for very many people, their first experience of flying in a small aircraft. And now that Airfix make one in 148 scale, for a lot of people, their first bash at making a model kit. There are a couple of issues with it, but I'll show you how to make it right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel, welcome back if you've been here before. Today indeed I am building the kit of the week. This is the De Havilland Canada DHC1 Chipmunk in 148 scale from Airfix. Now if you're just thinking about buying one, want to know what comes in the kit, there's a video already available. If you've got one in your stash or you've got one on order, want to know how to put it together, this is very much the video for you. If you like the video, and I hope you do, please do remember, Give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. You'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. If you'd like to make a more concrete contribution to the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks, by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online part programs. One of these is the Airfix Affiliate Program. If you follow the link in the information box below, Go to the Airfix store, buy anything you like there, and no extra cost to you, Airfix will make a small donation to the running of this channel. And of course, you can still use your Airfix 10% discount if you're an Airfix club member, and you can use and collect your hobby, hobby reward points as well. Right, let's make a start then and make this De Havilland Canada DHC1 chipmunk in 148 scale from Airfix. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start by constructing the front seat, front pilot seat. Um, there's a little tab here, so it goes through the gap there and sits there. I've, I've actually primed this first because um, it's going to be black, but I've just taken off some of the paint over the contact surfaces because I know a lot of you get very upset about that. So just to keep you happy, I have done that. There we go. Now we haven't bothered painting it yet because I have to drill through the sides here. I've got an aftermarket set of straps. So I've got to drill through the sides here so that the straps can go through there. Um, these are just the lap straps. The, the top straps actually go in when all this is completed inside the plane. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just drill a pilot hole sort of about a third of the way from the back in that that kind of down into that corner there. And I will probably make it larger than this when um, when I come to fit the actual uh, strap, it's not going to go through through that hole, but I might actually just drill another one just next to it and see whether that will make it wide enough. It should do actually, without making too much of a hole in the seat. And of course, I've got to do it on both sides and on both seats. So let's see how we go. There's also four holes to drill in the floor of the cockpit. I think these are these are compasses going here. Anyway, these holes are one millimeter in diameter each. There's two for each occupant, so two there and two here. So the compass roses go in with this pointy bit. So it's got this point a bit goes towards the slot for the control column. And we'll put those in in a minute. The control columns go in here. Now you can see the pin for them to mount is offset to the front. There, so you know which way round 
they have to go. Let's do it the old fashioned way. Okay, like that. Okay, the the parts are sort of sprayed up in black now and I'll also put some satin varnish over them. I'm just going to do some dry brushing. I'll stack them onto my trusty wooden block. Um, two reasons. So first, you can try out the amount of airbrushing on the grain here. You can see where it shows up and see whether it's, it's ready. And secondly, it won't go anywhere. Um, so yeah, just dry brush it along there just to pick out some of these highlights. I mean, a lot of it you're not going to see anyway on the on the kit, but it's just nice to know it's there, really, isn't it? It's just why we do an awful lot of the stuff we do. It's just because it's there. So it's just trying to get the idea of, you know, lots and lots of feet have trodden in here over the years. And also gives a bit of uh, modelling light. Lovely. Okay, so that's all done. Just a little bit of dry brushing with some silver really makes a difference. Right, we can put the harnesses on as well. We can just put the lap straps on because the harnesses go on when all the uh, everything's built for the plane. Actually, put in the cockpit. But they can put the lap straps on through the holes you made earlier. And these are just going to be tacked in place using a bit of super glue. The um, half with the quick release goes on the starboard sides looking forward. So, so this is a starboard, this is a port because this is the seat facing this way. So there we have them. The seat belts are in place. One's crossed over that way, the other's crossed over that way. I can't honestly tell you whether. We always had to have the quick release on top. I suspect there was a, a rule, something like, yeah, the quick release lap strap always goes on top of the other one. But you know what? I, I don't know. So that's where it is. So that's done. I can put those into the f cockpit floor here now. And then that assembly is ready to go into the cockpit itself when we've done a couple of other things. So now the forward seat sits in here and just dab a bit of glue onto that from the underside and that will keep that in place like so then the rear seat sits on the back like so you can see it's Pretty cramped. It's a pretty snug little plane, and I'll use some proper cement for that, by which I mean regular contactor. Right, I've done some dry brushing just to pick out these details. I've used silver. I know people can say that they don't actually rub off and make silver, but you know what? It's just there to provide contrast to be able to see this stuff when it's in the cockpit. Um, that's not going to be accurate, I know, but there we go. Um, there's also a few decals that have gone in here. The pilot seats can go in then. The rear seat just sits up against the back there. The front seat kind of hooks over. You can see this side piece here, the side, it kind of hooks over there. And the back just sort of sits into the space at the back there. And that's it. Lovely. When it's all lined up properly, the uh, front seat here hooks over, you can see there's like a slot there, it hooks over this piece here. And the rear seat, there's a tiny little notch or a tiny little sort of projection there that this sort of sits up against. And then that's everything in the right place. These levers need to go in now. There's one at the back and one at the front. Remember on the the time I built this, this caused a bit of trouble. I'm hoping now this is the second time I've done it. It's not so much of an issue and it seems to be all right. 
Ya, ya sin nada. That's a bit better. When these are set, I'll put some black on them. And likewise at the back here. There's a little plug for the um, tailwheel bay. I don't know it's got a bay because it hasn't actually got a retractable tailwheel, but there we go. It's the bit that goes that. This just needs a bit of black on the inside as well. Uh, black to the levers there, and then that's that, and we can join the two halves together. And before the two halves go together, the last thing you have to do here is just drill out these holes here for the strakes that go in front of the tailplane to improve the spinning characteristics of the aircraft. Now, if you're doing the silver 1949 Farnborough one, you're the first British chipmunk, you don't do this because that didn't have the strakes fitted as a manufacturer's item. They were fitted later or designed on later on when the aircraft had been tested to regularize its spinning performance. Because um, you don't want something that's unpredictable in spinning when you're teaching pilots how to get out of spins. You want it to do something predictable and regular every time. So that's what these strikes do. They sit, sit on here. Now, the instructions say to use a one millimeter drill. I think that's too big. I've used a 0.8 mil. I think that's about right. So a one mil drill, by all means, you can use it, but I think the hole would be just too big um, for for the actual uh, pegs that fit there. So I've gone for a 0.8 instead. So everything painted, holes are drilled, everything's in place. We can put the two halves of the fuselage together. Just uh, tape it all up, extra thin cement all round, and leave it to set. The instructions say to put the engine firewall on at this point. Um, just um, because you didn't see me do anything about it, all I've done is I've put on this oil container, the oil tank here, um, painted it silver, a little bit of brass for the cap. That's the interior green with a bit of black wash, a little bit of black and bits of silver there, all looking very nice and tidy. I don't know why I did that because I'm not having the engine compartment open, but I guess I did it so I could show you how to do it. The instructions say to put this part on now, um, and then later on we put on this part. Now, the, the joint between this part and the fuselage is actually pretty important. So what I might do instead is put this on, make sure that's properly round and properly matched on both sides first, then put the firewall in. And if it the firewall needs a bit of tweaking here or there, I'm not bothered by that. But I'd rather, so rather than put the firewall in there, which then sets this distance, and then find when I come to it that that's too big or too small, like this, it doesn't fit properly. I would rather cinch that up, get that absolutely matched up now, and then the firewall will go in no matter what. Of course, before this part goes on, I have to put the instrument panel in. This is just with the kit decals for the instruments i think they're looking fine uh, put those on a bit of uh microsole to get them to sit to the uh the shape of the instrument set that's already there and then some matte varnish on it just to dull it down a bit if you're going to have the uh the engine bay open it's, these are the two slots here there's some little um, tabs that fit in here that hold the, the doors open. I'm not having the doors open. I'm painting the inside, of course, just to show you how to paint the inside, but I'm not ultimately having the doors open. 
Okay, one thing I do need to do is just paint the back here and let that set. Make sure this is all finished and then paint the back here because the straps for the rear seat go in here. And the front seat, obviously, they just connect here, I think. But the rear seat ones connect quite a long way back. So I just need to paint that black and put the seat straps in. There's a combing here as well that uh, contains the rear instrument cluster that just slots onto the top here the instruments slot in down the sides of the um, cockpit's fuselage side there and then this covers them up this just needs a bit of tidying up um, and repainting this area needs repainting as well because that's where the straps are going to fit from the, the shoulder straps the two halves of the engine clamp together um, you put the propeller axle in there now if you want the propeller to turn obviously you don't glue that in place um, I don't particularly care about it so it doesn't bother me if it gets glued okay, this is um, where I'm, I'm glad I'm not making this uh, engine to be displayed because this part is under shot there should be four um, things poking up here. There's only two, the two in the middle. There should be the bits there and a little bit there. Um, it's not that I've cut it badly off the frame because the frame connection is here. So it's nothing to do with me, sadly. These are undershot parts. So, um, as I say, gladly, I'm not building the engine visible. So, actually, I don't think I even need to put this on. Now, the exhausts go in like so in between the inlets and that's supposed to sit at kind of almost like 45 degrees ish just, oh, there you go. yeah kind of like that okay and this cover goes on this side and that's going to be painted same grey as the rest of the engine. Like so, and then uh, just need to paint the. Just need to get that to sit. There we go. That's it. So then just need to do a little bit of paint here and there. There's silver and uh, brass on these two bits. Let it dry up uh, and then give it a coat of um grime <laughs> engine grime as it were and then we can put the mounts on and then it can go in the aircraft while the front of the plane is being taken care of i'll start on the back this is the tailplane assembly it's a single part upper and then each half has its own lower part of the tailplane itself and I'll just glue those into place. Then the elevators go into place as well. What you need to remember to do is that the one on, with the trim tab here goes on the starboard side, on the right side. Then the tail assembly can go onto the back end of the fuselage and we will need just to do a bit of tidying up of that joint then the rudder can go in now if you're doing the um, first British one the 1949 one there's a different rudder it's slightly smaller they increase the size of the rudder um, to give it more authority again uh, as a way of making it spin more uh, predictably and uh, to give it better control on spinning so scheme a c or d you use this larger one which is um, part c6 and if you're doing scheme b the early british one or first british chipmunk then you use the other rudder that supplies c5 
then again on the early the first British one you don't put these strakes on for all the other three schemes you do these little spin strakes here do make sure you get them the right way round side to side because they are very slightly beveled to take account of the angle of the um, fuselage here so if you get them so that the um, strake leads into that leading edge there if you've got them wrong way around there'll be a big gap along there and it'll look wrong whereas uh, this way around it looks lovely and um, when the engine's ready you've given a nice sort of coat of dirtying up fluid or something you can put the engine mountings on and again when the engine mountings are done i'm just going to give them a little bit of a dark wash just to make them look a bit used so one on each side then when everything's set you can put the engine and its mountings onto the aircraft like so There's a few extra little bits and pieces to add around the place. The bottom panel sits underneath the engine here. And note there's like a little step here um, at the panel because there's a sort of pipe that has to come out there. That's molded on, but um, there is actually a, a step there. So don't try and get it absolutely flush that way. Um, and then the front front of the engine cover sits on there and theoretically at least connects up with the top rail of the engine like that then we can put the engine covers on now if you're having the open engine you would have put little slots here and here little tabs and the oh, right now we put the engine cover on now if you've if you're doing an open engine you'll notice this these but this that slot is and that slot is there there'll be little tabs sticking up here that you would have put on earlier and then the engine cover would sit over them like so okay but i'm not doing that i'm going to put the engine closed so let's put the engine cover on and of course you can just glue it into place and next we're starting on the wings now these have caused a lot of issues with people um, making this kit because what happens is um, sometimes you'll find the wings will start to droop like this and they're not like that they're quite straight they're absolutely straight so right from the start we're going to make sure this doesn't happen the first thing we're going to do we've got this sort of spar strengthening member here to put in don't put it all tack it all in one just tack one side in at once first get this set and when that is set then set the other side but do one at a time make sure that cross member is properly firmly glued in and it's glued on this side and that will maintain the inside angle of the wings that's the start of this process best thing to do i think is to clamp that side on first leave this side as long as it's rough you know it's in the right place but don't worry about it being clamped down clamp this side first let it dry let it set then do the other side and that will guarantee that the bottom wing is at the right dihedral i need to put this little light in there is a triangular bit to show you which way around it goes why you need it to go particularly way around, way around when it's round underneath i don't know but anyway put that in and then the tiniest dab of extra thin probably best on the tip of that triangle bit there you'll see the glue shoot round and that'll be that that'll be secure 
The bottom of the wing goes on now. You can see it's got these tabs here. They have to connect underneath there. Then push it forward and get it level. Then it slots into the back here. Like so. Okay. You can dab some glue around to keep it in place. Now, when you're taking the wings off the frame, do be careful. This, this strip here is like a, a slightly sharpened strip at the front of the leading edge. It's there to help with stall, getting stall condition better and more predictable on the aircraft. So be really careful when you take it off the frame here. Really best idea is to take it away a bit and then sand that down rather than just try and get rid of it straight away when you take it off because it's quite a sharp little leading edge and you don't want to lose that and so here's the problem here's the problem with the chipmunk wing is it sits in nicely at this end with the stall strip lovely problem is this peg here let's just open up the gap slightly so you can see this peg in the middle here doesn't actually line up with the hole in it in the bottom of the wing very well. If you make it line up to close it, straight away you can see you get a, a downward bending wing and that's not there on the chipmunk. Chipmunk's got lovely straight wings. So what you are probably best doing is sanding off that peg completely. Then getting it bonded together and then try and even out this end of the wing as much as you can it won't be absolutely level this this top surface doesn't match the bottom surface correctly i don't think so you might need to do a bit of creative sanding at the end here but the most important thing first of all is to get rid of that alignment pin because that's what causes most of the problems here right, so sand it off that peg completely now and we'll put the wing in, we clip it in to the end like this and settle it down, settle in the inboard section, which fits perfectly. And then just run up. Yeah, now the problem here is going to be the top of the light here, because again, it's just need to extend that little notch there. So it sits over the light correctly let's have a quick sand down of that okay okay so now the wing can set correctly we're going to tape it um, make sure it tapes so that this sits properly if you let, let it go it will try and droop so make sure it sits properly you may even tape across the top to the other wing when it, when that's on to make sure this sits absolutely spot on so here we are, I've glued the two halves up. I have put tape on all the edges. I can to keep it. And then I've put tape across the top to keep those absolutely straight. I'm gonna to have to do a lot of filling on the front of the wings because they're not fitting properly together. But you know, I'd rather have the wings straight and have to do a little bit of work. Um, it's just really not that great apart, frankly, by ethics. When the wings are finally set, you can put the ailerons in as well. Right, so I'm going to make a start in the canopy now. The first thing I'm going to do is put the masks in. Now I've got a mask set that does interior and exterior canopy um, because I want to do the interior properly this time. So I'll put these on the plastic parts first, then we'll assemb assemble them into their bits that before they go on the aircraft. Going to make the canopy now, but the first thing you have to do is make the jig. And this is one part of the jig, and then this second little bit of the jig goes on. Now they say, don't glue this, but you know, I kind of feeling you probably have to in a way, because I'm not sure that's going to stay on by itself. Um, anyway, I won't for the moment. I don't as I am told. Now, the idea is that the um, window pieces that you've got sits on the bottom 
of it like that and then I don't know if you can see I'll, I'll try and zoom in a bit so I can see if we can get a bit of view, better view okay you can see there's a tab here on that extra bit and there's a slot on the inside of the window now those have to match up uh, like that and that positions this bottom pane we do the same on the other side The port undercarriage leg has a landing light on it, which comes, it's a whole transparent part. And what we do is basically just block off the front there and it gets painted with everything else so that that just stays transparent. So there we go, that's the mask in place. The thing is, you know, I put these masks on right here and under the wing and I always forget them when I finish the kit. So. If you see this at the end of the kit and it's not actually a clear piece, it's because I've forgotten to take the mask off. I'll do. I'll try to remember that. Then the undercarriage legs can just go into their place in the wings, like so. Let them set nicely, and then we'll paint the canopy inside of the canopy. It on and then we can paint the aircraft right so what I have done is I've masked inside and out on this given the inside a coat of primer and then a coat of black the interior framing on chipmunks is black so now remember to remove the masking tape now it sounds stupid but I know I've forgotten on things like this in the past. I know many of you have forgotten on things like this in the past. It's kind of a rite of passage that you forget something you've masked and then you have to undo things to get to it or just live with the fact that you now have something bright yellow on the other side of the glass instead of whatever colour it was. So do please remember to take off the masking if you've done an interior mask and if you've done interior paint. Okay. Um, it's not always as easy as all that to get off. I'm using quite a stiff wood and it's not really lifting very well in the corner. I don't want to use a scalpel or anything because you know you can scratch the plastic really, really easily. There you go. I think I've got a slightly harder sort of cocktail stick type thing. Okay, this is a bit harder wood this is made of. There we go picks up the edge better okay and just go around doing that and um, then we're ready to put the canopy on right, now there is a piece that's supposed to go in here it's a bar that's supposed to go in here now uh, here it is the top one end of it is here as you can see it snaps there what happens is the the frame comes out here and it feeds down into the side of this bar which is like that thick all right so it's got a feed into the side you cut it off at the feed point it's got a, a nub there i tried it and i promise you really gently to sand it and it just went snapped and pinged i can't find i i have a bare wooden floor and i can't find it so do you know what this bar isn't going on. i don't have time to wait for Airfix to send me a new one or anything like that. So it would go in place in here, but on my kit, it's not going to. Alrighty, so it's time for the uh, canopy to go on. Remember, I'm, use, I'm having canopy closed up. You can have the canopy opened up to kind of that there ish if you want, because the guy at the back's got to get out as well. Then he slides it forward until there, then the pilot takes over and closes it front seater i should say it was the pilot when we were flying chipmunks as a cadet it would be the pilot in the front seat because you normally uh, quite often the pilot would be in the back seat and the student would be at the front seat learning everything they can anyway 
and that's how I'm doing mine. Um, you can, if you're going to be careful, you can um, put some extra thin cement in there um, to take this one, or you can use a PVA style glue. I've got this crystal magic glue I like using for canopies. It takes longer to dry for sure, but it does dry completely clear. And it doesn't actually fill up any little gaps that may be there. So that's what I use. So just put a tiny bit of the crystal clear on, on the can. Well, this is the windshield I'm doing now. You should be seeing this, of course. Okay, so just a little bead of crystal clear along there. And then it drops into place. I will say that this fit on this is really good. The fit on this, the canopy to the aircraft itself is very, very, very good. Okay, so that's cool. And then we just do the same with the uh, actual sliding canopy, as it was the main canopy. Okay, so it goes in there. Nestles up nicely against that and there we go the canopies on now We are going to leave that for a few hours to be absolutely dry before we do anything else the next step of course will be to um, prime the aircraft and uh, Then paint it Okay, so now the primer's dry we're ready to paint the aircraft I'm going to do it all over in brown first then do the camouflage pattern in green on top now I'm using Vallejo color here. Now the problem is I've got two bottles of BS Dark Earth 71323. Here they are, 71323 and 71323. And they are different colors. And I thought, well, that could just be the bottle. And I'll give them a good old shake. Out they come. And they are different colors. I'm going to go for this one because I like the slightly paler look to the dark earth, but it's just a bit bizarre when two bottles from the same manufacturer of the same paint are that different. That's just crazy. Anyway, I'm going to go with this one. So we've given the whole thing um, a camouflage coat as well as the base brown, put the green on top, given the whole thing a gloss varnish coat, and now I can put the decals on. And while the plane's upside down, I might as well put the wheels on. These have tabs so they face the right way and the Break bodies are in the right place and so on and so forth. The tail wheel can go in as well. It slots into the back of the bulkhead we put in right early in the beginning. The propeller sits on this back plate and kind of just turn it till it sits in place as a as a a ridge and, and a chunk in the back of the propeller that lines everything up. You can get a bit of um, glue for that. Then when that's done, we can put the onto the propeller, the boss, the spinner, call it what you will. There you go. That again, you have to turn it until it, all f it just sort of clicks into place together. And a bit of glue for that. We'll just touch up these um, old attachment points in a moment. Then the propeller can go on the front of the aircraft like so. Then 
the last thing I need to do here is put on these very very shaky hands put on these tiny little canopy opening catches there we go they really are very very small but an integral part of the chippy um on the training ones obviously these would be red and white or something red and yellow maybe red and white i think seem to remember them there we go and that's the that's the chippy done there it is then the de havilland dhc1 chipmunk in 148 scale from airfix this is a decent little kit let's be straight about that it really is a very nice little kit there are a couple of things that are irksome first is the fitting of the wings here you can see i've got the wings nice and straight on the original the wings are bent that's because the top halves of the wings don't fit correctly onto the bottom halves of the wings and you've got to do a bit of uh, sanding and rejigging around and more filling and sanding and stuff like that to get it absolutely straight which is silly because this must must have been prototyped it must have been tried out and i don't understand why they got that so wrong anyway it's okay it's rescuable it's fine uh the other thing is a strange way you have to put the canopy together i guess it avoids having a a slide on the canopy part which makes it cheaper to produce maybe it's because there's going to be different types of canopy in the future who knows but it was a little bit of a pain yeah for for a kit that you know allegedly people can just make straight from scratch it's a bit surprising to see that anyway um I liked it. I love it. I love a chipmunk. I always have loved the chipmunk. I was so excited when Airfix announced they were building this. This is my second one I've built. Second one I'm happy with. I've enjoyed it. Hope you have too. There is then a few things to look out for, but generally speaking, it's a pretty decent little kit and quite fun to make. If you've enjoyed the show, and I hope you have, please do remember, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is released. Thanks very much for watching today. Hope to see you again very soon. Take good care now, and goodbye.